In this video, I'll be talking about Kahn's syndrome. I will first go through the brief anatomy of the adrenal glands. Adrenal glands are small glands situated on top of both the left and right kidneys. What we can see in this picture here, this is the left adrenal gland and there is the right adrenal gland. So now we look at the small box over here. Adrenal gland is composed of two parts, which is the outer adrenal cortex and the inner adrenal medulla. So since I'll be talking about Kahn's syndrome, I'll focus on the adrenal cortex, which is the outer layer. So the cortex produces three hormones, which are mineralocorticoids, for example, aldosterone. Second one is glucocorticoids, for example, cortisol. And the third hormone is androgens, for example, testosterone. So I have highlighted in red color here, aldosterone, which is a mineralocorticoid and it plays an important role in Kahn's syndrome. This aldosterone hormone, it helps to maintain the body's salt and water levels, which in turn regulate, regulates blood pressure. And if there is no aldosterone, the kidney will lose an excessive amount of sodium and also water, which will lead to severe dehydration and low blood pressure. Okay, moving on to the next slide. The definition of Kahn syndrome. Kahn syndrome is primary hyperaldosteronism, which means there is high level of aldosterone due to the presence of an aldosterone producing adrenal adenoma. Adrenal adenoma is a benign tumor of the adrenal cortex. If the benign tumor is in the adrenal medulla, it is called pheochromocytoma. Okay, so when there is adrenal adenoma, the tumor is in the adrenal cortex and this will cause excessive production of aldosterone causing high sodium and water retention because aldosterone increases the reabsorption of sodium and increase the secretion of potassium so more sodium will be reabsorbed back into the body and the water follows the sodium so this causing high sodium and water retention and when this happens when the aldosterone level is high, it will cause a negative feedback onto the production of renin. So there is a lot of aldosterone already, so there will be decrease in release of renin. Okay, next, the clinical features of Kahn syndrome. There are three main features, which are hypernatremia, which means high sodium level. The second one is hypokalemia, which means low potassium level. And here are the signs and symptoms of hypokalemia. For example, weakness, muscle cramp, para paraesthesia, polyuria, and polydipsia. And the third clinical feature is metabolic alkalosis. There are also some other signs and symptoms or clinical features like hypertension and headache. So for investigation of Kahn's syndrome, we can do renal profile where we expect to see high sodium level and low potassium level. The second investigation is renin and aldosterone level. So do a test to see their levels where we expect high aldosterone to renin ratio in Kahn syndrome. To confirm the diagnosis, we do saline suppression test where the patient is given a saline infusion into a vein and the normal response will be the aldosterone release will be suppressed because the renin is decreased. So when the, uh, if after the saline suppression test, the aldosterone level is still high, means it, might, it is suggesting Kahn syndrome. And once we have confirmed Kahn syndrome, we will do a CT scan of the adrenal glands to localize the tumor. Okay, for treatment of Kahn syndrome, the main treatment is laparoscopic adrenalectomy, where the adrenal glands is removed. And also spironolactone is given to control the blood pressure and potassium level for four weeks before the operation. Okay, that's all for my brief discussion on Kahn syndrome. Thank you.